So we're here with the Barrow here, the Ninara Connect. And uh, what are these guys? We have your dogs right here. Yes, that's one of the nice things about finally having a Connect in Europe again. It's uh, no flight involved, so the dogs can come. So you took the, the you took the the train from Switzerland to come here, right? Yeah, exactly. Who's this guy? That's Guido. Guido and and that's Laska. Laska, hello. <laughs> All right, and you. Laska's a little shy. She's a rescue. <laughs> and the hotel allow dogs. Yes. No problem. They're really good about it. So let's stand right over here. Um, so, um, what's the latest? Because ah. we did a video four or five years ago, and uh, you had the uh, faster, you had speed up. Did you change the compiler in Android to speed it up? Yes, right. And we also made some modifications to the core libraries, like Bionic. We don't have anything like that to show off this time because all those changes have gone upstream. So you just have them in any Android device. So that means my Android, everybody's Android, has your stuff in there. As long as they are running a fairly decent uh, recent version, yes. Which version? I think most of the stuff landed by 6.0 and some other stuff by 7.0. So it took some work. You were showing this off already in 2012, 2013, right? Yes. And then uh, it, it arrived in the phone 2015, 16, 2016. Yeah, it always takes a while to get this stuff upstream, but this is actually speeding up these days. It's always easier to get a patch accepted if you, uh, you've worked with the people upstream before and they know that you don't generally deliver crap. But now you're doing, a, a, maybe you can take off the, the, this one. Now you're doing, a, what's it called? A, is it true that now you're working on speeding up a boot time? Now you want to make it faster, 20% faster to boot Android? Yes, that actually already happened and uh, there's a demo right over there. Demos run by TI, but it's essentially based on the patches from LMG. So uh, the Linaro Mobile Group, which is what you do, which is what you've been doing all the time, right? Yes. You've always been in the mobile. You only care about mobile phones? No, obviously not. The, what, I mean, <laughs> you have uh, this one. There's a couple of... This uh, is, for example, another project I've been working on in spare time, but there's nothing to show off yet. Essentially, this is just the hardware I have right now. But the idea is to uh, get a normal Linux distribution running on it. So we finally have an ARC64 device to do native development on. It's definitely going to be possible to run any uh, Linux you want on, on the, the ARM part Chromebooks? Yes. So which one do you want to run? I'd like to run OpenMint Reaver, that's what I run on my x86 desktops as well. Uh, it always has current stuff. It's built with Clang, which is the compiler I'm also using for Android. You talk so about that's Clang a good a lot. match. You, you've been talking about Clang since uh, 2013, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's around the time it started becoming a viable alternative to GCC. Uh, so why do you talk about that so much? What's good about it? It's well, one of the great things is having two compilers that are both good, GCC and Clang, because they both detect different types of errors in code. They give you different warnings that both point out valid issues. And sometimes uh, one will give you a much faster binary. Yeah, let me just hold uh, one second. Uh, your, your dogs. Yeah, right here. Uh, is there any chance that uh, is there any chance you can uh, check that out? This is a Chromebook class. Uh, there. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? No, it looks like a really nice device. I haven't seen it before. This is a rock chip Chromebook, very thin, ultra high resolution. That looks like another device that needs to uh, run a real Linux distribution. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Chrome OS for what it does, but I really like uh, operating systems on which you can do proper development. But it's nice now that uh, Android is doing uh, what's called uh, Android apps, right? So yes. how do they do that? Um, there's a layer inside the new Chrome OS. I forgot what it's called, but essentially what it is technically is a, a kind of a light virtual machine that uh, runs the Art Engine, which is Android's uh, Java layer. And inside that it runs Android apps and 
can even run native code. But is it supposed to be that the Android apps are supposed to uh, get access to all the data on the Chromebook? Or are they like separate from the Chrome OS, kind of? They're like running in a different area, kind of. I haven't looked at it that closely yet, but I think they run in a different sandbox, but they might do uh, bind mounts to, uh, to pull in the files from the regular file system. I'm not completely sure whether or not they're doing but that But if yet. they implement that perfectly with Android 7, if they do everything perfectly, is there any chance that you would actually say that Chrome OS, okay, it's getting to something and suddenly you get a great Android app that can do what you need, and then maybe you can actually be happy with that, or you still want to run Mandriva? I'd still want to run a normal Linux distribution because right now even in Android we don't have the compilers and everything that we want to do, uh, have to do development. But of course that might change soon. One of the projects LMG is starting on is actually getting all the development tools you need to build AOSP uh, into ARC64. And then, of course, once we have it running on the ARC64 hardware, the next interesting thing will be to just make uh, it possible to build AOSP on AOSP, at which point it will become a real development platform. And uh, you are actually involved in trying to get uh, something that looks like this uh, for 96 boards, are you not? Yes, is it, right. Is it a project that's happening? Yes, it's happening. How are you going to make it happen? We are still looking for a couple of PCB parts and especially a laptop case. But the idea is to have a laptop case that doesn't have a main board or anything in it. But you open it and then you put a 96 board in it. Where? And it, in there? On the back? Yeah, maybe uh, probably on the bottom because that's where they probably have most and space. And then the ports would be on the side? Yeah, the bo uh, ports would probably be on the back because that's where they would come out from the board. And uh, mm. it would be great, no? That, can you make it happen uh, in the next six months? Can we have this kind of perfect lab docs for uh, the next NR Connect and hand it up out to every attendee? I'm not making any promises because it's really hard to work with hardware suppliers. Usually uh, when you talk to them about making a PCB that, for example, takes power from a power plug and then charges a battery, they say, oh yeah, that's not a problem, we can make it for you, that uh, circuit plan you have would probably work, but uh, how many million units do you want? <laughs> and this one, uh, this one right here, as far as I know, has display port out and display link out. Is there any chance we can have display link in and connect the phone to a Chromebook and power the Chromebook from the phone? Is this possible? If both the hardware and the software support it, uh, certainly. But I'm not completely sure if the hardware currently supports it. And without the hardware supporting it, doing it purely in software is probably not possible. What, the, what do you think is the ultimate phone? You have Pixel, right? Oh, I have several phones. But, uh, what do you think would be the I wouldn't say if you want something better? Is it possible to run Mandrio Linux mm. on a phone? That will soon be possible. But um, really, the perfect phone for me would be at least as open as a Nexus or a Pixel. Being open is super important for a developer, obviously, but also for uh, security concerns. I mean, I'm not saying that Google is doing anything evil or so, but there's always some risk that as long as there are binary applications to which you don't have the source code, someone is listening in. And I, for one, don't want Microsoft or Apple to find out uh, what I'm planning to do to make Linux or Android better operating systems. How about uh, something like this? Uh, I was filming this video with the, the Indiegogo project where there will be like a, a full built-in keyboard and uh, this, this phone could be running a full Linux. Potentially, you could dual boot Android and have uh, whatever Linux you want. That'd be cool, no? Certainly, especially if it's so open the, uh, that uh, everyone can edit what's on there. So you would totally consider getting new phones, right? So you, you, like, you buy phones every month, no? Uh, not really. Do people send you free phones? <laughs> no. Why not? <laughs> That's a good question. You have to ask the phone companies. <laughs> they should definitely send you the phone because you speed it up 20% in your spare time, right? Yeah, but uh, 
most phones uh, don't have an open bootloader or anything and don't have open device files and so on. So if they are not really hackable, there's not that much I can do to make them better. And we're right here. These guys are, what are they waiting for? Um, oh, he wants to escape. Okay. Yeah. And this guy, okay, right there. There's Hello. still some food left over there. They're going to jump on the table. So let's uh, hang on to them right here. So I'm just wondering how long are you staying in Budapest? I've been here for uh, the week of the Naro Connect, and now I'm staying two extra days for an Open and River developer meeting. Oh, is that happening? Yes. In Budapest? Yes, right here. Did you organize starting it? Starting right after Connect. Did you organize it? I helped organize it, which is why the timing is so convenient for me. <laughs> and how many guys are coming to that? Around eight. Eight. What are you going to do? Essentially discuss the future of the operating systems, uh, plan the next release. You've been involved in Open Mandrill for a long time, no? Yes. And Essentially since the project got off. You started it? Not really. I was one member of a group that started it. And uh, you've been, that's what you were doing before Linaro, right? What were you doing before Linaro? Uh, what before Linaro I was working in a couple of startups that uh, ran out of cash before uh, making it to market. So that's why I was essentially invisible. We had an e-reader uh, quite a bit uh, before Amazon came out and popularized the concept. And, uh, we had a PVR before TiVo came out and uh, popularized it. But by the time we had it, now we essentially had similar problems to the, uh, what I'm facing now with the laptop. People saying, um, ah, this is all very interesting. Uh, now give us the money so we can produce a million units. <laughs> but now, uh, I, I guess you invested in the right stocks, right? You bought arm shares and you have like, now you have millions in the bank, right? You can, you, <laughs> you can fund whatever you want or not? No, when yeah. Not yet? I did actually invest in arm a little and uh, gained from the soft bank purchase, but it's no when yeah, millions. Well, you got enough so you can uh, feed these guys for a couple years, right? Yeah. Probably. All Those right. guys are uh, probably set up to be fed. <laughs> Up in the mountain and wrapped in, uh, yeah. in, the, in the village. Right. Yeah. And uh, so what do you think? What's the latest? Uh, are you happy with Linaro? You, you working yes, with lots certainly. of guys? It's a great place to work. There's so many good people who all care about the same things and who understand that being open is uh, one of the key things in uh, making a nice OS. And is it going to get even more exciting now that Google is a member? I hope so. Potentially, it could like something crazy might happen, right? Yeah, of course. This could help us get all the patches upstream that are still in the queue, and it could help us get involved in some features in your Android builds to, uh, that so far Google has been working on by itself. Potentially, I would like to see uh, Android for productivity. So we're seeing here the first device officially making Android for productivity because now keyboard and mouse, Android apps. Uh, but there's a lot of other steps that need to be taken to make this a viable device for most people. And after it's most people, then maybe also for you. Because yeah. you have a lot of demands. But you have the maximum but that anyone can have. But Probably uh, those demands are actually easier to meet than those of certain others. Because essentially what I need is development tools that can essentially all be launched from a command line while other people will want uh, graphics editing applications like Krita or GIMP or whatever that are much harder to port. I want the 4K video editing app. Yeah, I'm not that yet sure would that be it really works. really nice to have. Uh, and uh, add up Photoshop. But is there, there's a bunch of apps on Android and uh, Office. We can even run Microsoft Office. What do you think about Microsoft announcing they will make ARM servers? Are you enthusiastic about that? Well... <laughs> For historic reasons, I'm not too fond of Microsoft, but they've been getting a lot better. I mean, they joined the Linux Foundation, now they're getting into ARM servers, which I hope will be running Linux. And uh, of course, I welcome anyone into our community. They're welcome to join Linaro, right? Of course. And they're welcome to uh, launch Bing Chromebooks. With Bing Search. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, and, that... and Bing phones, Android. That would certainly be something I'd consider if I was in their place. Because I already just saw Nokia launching Android phones, but it's not the Microsoft Nokia, it's another kind of Nokia. 
So it's finally happening. Right? Cool.